how to feel inside. I can't explain certain kind. I can't explain. I feel out and cold. I can't explain. I'm feeling good now, yeah, but I can't explain. Hi guys, how's it going? Andy here. Uh, this is another one of your ten songs with three chords. E major, A major, and D major. And this is a classic riff. This is how to play Can't Explain by The Who. Uh, the first hit by The Who, and I believe it was them trying to sound like the Kinks, if you believe Pete Townsend. Uh, but it starts off on your E major chord. And the signature thing of this riff, um, as well as many other classic riffs, uh, certainly classic rock riffs anyway, um, is muting. So we're going to strum, and then we're going to touch the strings with the outside of your palm. So um, um, with this technique, uh, we, we have stops, or b parts of silence. And that's the, probably the biggest feature of any classic rock riff. So... For example, any ACDC song such as Highway to Hell, they all have this mute in them and the silence. Um, something like I Love Rock and Roll, there's lots of this silence which is done the outside of your palm there. Sometimes that's used um, to create a, a hitting sound or a, a sound of some sort. Um, mainly on acoustic guitar, but in this case we just want to dampen it, don't hit it too hard. We're just stopping the strings from vibrating uh, to stop your guitar. And first of all I would like you to play this riff. That's the rhythm of the song, uh, just on the E major chord, strum, mute, strum, strum, mute. And that's on one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. And that's the rhythm that's going to be used for all, this entire riff and every chord change, but that just allows us to focus on the right hand first of all. So I want you to join in with me now. One, two, three, four. E, mute, E, e mute. E, mute, E, e mute. Okay? Um, next we're going to change chord, and after every mute, until the end of this riff, we're going to change between each of your three chords that you currently know. So we've got your E major, strum, mute. D major, straight away, so we're going to use that first finger anchor again. It's going to be really important because there's a lot of quick changes in this song. D, D, just two down strokes is absolutely fine. D, D, mute. Then to your A chord, mute. And then finally, two E's and mute again. So just listen to that one more time, just to make sure we've got the order correct. We're going E, mute, D, D, mute, A, mute, E, D, mute. And that is your riff. Now, it's actually... Some people aren't really aware what a riff is. They know, they know it's the cool part of a song or the bit that they want to learn. But the uh, real... The thing that makes a riff um, fantastic, in my opinion, is the fact that you can play it and straight away people are going to recognise it. That's the one key feature for me. Um, and the other key feature is that it's going to repeat a lot. So once you learn this sequence... You'll be able to play the entire song and when you play it in front of your friends or in a guitar shop um, everyone's going to recognise it. They're going to go, hey, listen to you playing that and, and recognise what it is. If you play another chord sequence with these same three chords, but you go E and then to D, back to A, just with normal strumming, or if you play any other song that's similar to that, someone would hear that and not really be sure what song you were going for. Whereas if you play this riff or a riff like it that's really uh, unique and really identifiable, then they know what you're playing and you get recognised and it's, it's really fun. Um, so let's uh, do this in order one more time and then I'll talk you through your chorus and the rest of the song. So the main riff, slowly, in, one, two, three, four. E, 
mute, D D mute, A mute, D D mute, D mute, D D mute, A mute. Got a feeling inside. I can't explain the certain kind. I can't explain. I feel hot and cold. I can't explain. Feeling good now, yeah, but I can't explain. Great stuff. Okay, now with um, this muting as well, I want you to be aware that you're muting on beats two and four every bar. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Now there's a real significance to beats two and four. On a rock drum sound, that's where the snare hits, and the snare is the big kind of hand clap um, sound, the, the big, uh, the biggest, loudest part of a of a, a drum kit easily, and it makes a, a really big sound, and that's kind of where your your rock drum kit sound comes from. The main thing that gives it that sound is the fact that nothing else normally plays on it. Strum, mute. And the drum's got a whole beat on its own, so you know, with with lots of other riffs, even something like um, uh, "Back in Black," snare, snare, snare. Every time that big sounds just on its own, um, so it's a real key feature. Also, beats two and four, and where that snare hits, actually dictates your tempo, because sometimes you can be unsure whether the regular count that you can hear is actually the beat or whether that's uh, something else happening in the song, whether that's the eighths or, or, or any other division. So it's actually beats two and four, where the snare hits, that tells you for definite where that count of one, two, three, four is. And it would be the kick drum, the low bass uh, drum, that happens on beats one and three, typically. And the snare always happens on beats two and four. So one, two, three, four. And we're emphasizing that by playing on the kick, one, two, and muting on the snare. And that's how most classic rock riffs work, if you want to have a play around with that. Um, as I say, ACDC, classic examples, um, anything with big chords and muting, I love rock and roll, snare, snare, you know, a, a million songs uh, do that sort of technique, it's really cool to know about. Um, just before your chorus, we have a very short bridge where it goes, I know what I mean, but... That section does introduce a new chord, and that chord is a B chord. I'm currently playing a B power chord to give it the sound of the record. We've got a couple of options here. Um, to keep it with the three chords of my, my course, um, you can slide the A chord two frets higher, and that will sound like the, that's still a B chord. I know what I mean, but. Um, or if you know a B7, you can go for the B7. I know what I mean, but. But in my opinion, even either the uh, the A chord slid up two frets, so this would be all three fingers. However, you play an A chord at the fourth fret. Or a B power chord is the best way to go for this riff. So let's cycle through the normal riff twice and then do I know what I mean, but. If you're not familiar with this section of the song, pause this video and go and have a look at that song. Uh, just have a listen to it first before we play this because you got to know how it goes before you try and play a riff such as this. Okay, two times through the riff and then I know what I mean, but. Two, three, four. Rip again. And finally, I know what I mean, but. Okay, then, I can't explain, I think it's love, your chorus. I can't explain, I think it's love. Two strums of a uh, E chord, two bars of E, to a bar of A. And then a bar of um, the new kind of B chord, sliding your A up uh, two frets. It's a slight cheat, I know, but it allows you to play a song, so and it's a real cool song. So, I can't explain, I think it's love, try to say it to you, when I feel blue, straight back into your riff. 
I can't explain I'm feeling good now, yeah, but I can't explain Okay, so let's string those three sections together and that's the whole song. So we're gonna go, let's go three times through the riff this time. Then to your bridge, you know what I mean, but... And then do the chorus, and that's the whole song. So, riff, one, two, three, four. I'm busy in the head, and now I'm feeling glad. The things you say got me real mad. I'm getting funny feelings. Next section, I know what I mean, but... Chorus three, four, I can't explain. I think it's love. Try to say it to you. Slide when I feel you. And riff, I can't explain. I can't explain. Um, definitely when you're playing this A to the B chord, um, similar to if you've ever done power chords before, what you actually want to do is keep your fingers down the whole time. When you're moving from this chord, if I do it slowly, you'll hear the slide. I'm not lifting my fingers off at all. I'm not lifting them off the strings or the fretboard. In the song, you will find that easier rather than lifting them off, losing your place, and then going back down. Um, but that's the whole song. I uh, highly advise playing it along to the record, as with any of your uh, rock guitar riffs or any song that you know, it's great to be able to play it to the record. There'll be no capo needed on this song, you can just play straight along to it. It is fast. Again, I recommend VLC Media Player or QuickTime or anything to slow the song down just a little bit. 10% or 20% will do absolutely fine. Um, just to make sure that you're muting on the beat and that you can play it in time uh, before having to go to the proper record. That's this, the end of this video. That's the end of this video. Check out my other songs in this series of 10 songs played with just three chords, E, A, and D. Please subscribe, check out my website, and uh, add me on Facebook, and I'll see you uh, another time.